I usually give it a second here before I start giving my quick intro. <laughs> there we go. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, just some quick housekeeping pieces. Welcome to the Keystone Virtual College Exploration and more importantly, Pennsylvania College of Technology's presentation. Um, you'll be able to ask questions through the Q&A option at the bottom of your screen or wherever you have your, your bar at. Uh, your camera and microphone are off, so please um, just use the Q&A and our presenters will be able to answer you either live or individually in the, in the Q&A options. Obviously, please look to sign up for some more sessions. We're, we're nearing the end of our exploration, our scheduled uh, presentations, but all recordings are available on the website as well. So please feel free to go back and check any past presentations or the recording for this presentation will be available in a few business days as well. So without further ado, I'm handing it over to my wonderful colleagues at um, Pennsylvania College of Technology and they are gonna have a ton of information for you. Have a good one, guys. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We're so excited that you're here and that you wanna learn more about Penn College. Um, before we get started with our presentation though, I just wanna provide some introductions. So I'm Katie Burke, I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Penn College and I work with students from Southeastern PA as well as New York City and Long Island. And I'm joined here by Brad Walter and Rebecca High. So if Brad, you wanna take a second to introduce yourself, please. Yeah, sure, thank you. Uh, like you said, my name is Brad Walter. I am also an admissions counselor here. I'm also an alum of Penn College. So I graduated from here in May of 2019. And I work with students that are local to Penn College and then into Northeastern Pennsylvania. Awesome, thank you. And how about Rebecca, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Rebecca, hi. Um, I'm originally from Southern Lancaster County. I'm here studying baking and pastry arts currently, and I'll also be moving on into my applied management degree in the spring. Awesome. Thank you so much. And with that, I'm going to share my screen and then we'll be able to get started with our presentation. So um, we're just going to provide you with an introduction to Penn College and what you can expect as a student here. And then, of course, I'm lucky to be joined by both Brad and Rebecca so they can give you sort of the insider view of what to expect as a student. So without further ado. Okay, so at Penn College, we are a national leader in applied technology education. So our students are getting hands-on experience in our labs in real world set in real world settings, um, and they're actually able to use the latest technology and equipment that's available out in the industry. All of our faculty are industry experts and they all have relevant proven experience. Um, so we don't utilize any graduate teaching assistance. All of your instructors and professors here have experience out in the field and many of them are actually still working in their fields today. So they're able to bring all of their experience and perspective and be a great resource to you as a student. And with that, we'll take a further dive into our numbers here so you know a little bit more of what to expect as a student. So first you'll see that we do have over 100 diverse majors for our students to choose from. Um, and with those, our students are getting jobs very quickly, which is made evident by our 98% graduate placement rate. So our majors are within high demand fields and our students are getting jobs quickly, but they're also getting their dream jobs right after graduation. So we're always super excited for them. One thing that definitely helps our students with um, competition when they're entering the job market is that they're able to get that real world hands on experience in our 150 plus learning labs that we have here on campus. Um, and then finally, you'll see that we have our average class size is 16. So we offer very small class sizes, which is very beneficial to our students for a, a multitude of different reasons. One being that you're going to get a lot of face time with your professors um, and you'll also have more access to the technology and equipment that's available to you in your labs. So we're always super excited for our students to come here and get that hands-on experience and then use your professors too and your instructors while you're here. They're a great resource of information to you and also have their connections out in the industry um, with business and uh, industry partnerships that they have. So definitely rely on them and they'll be a great support system for you here as well. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Brad so he can talk a little bit more about what you can expect in some of our labs here. Yeah, thank you. So 
like Katie said, we are a, a national leader in hands-on applied technology. Um, and, and really she broke it down. You have access to the newest equipment, um, updated labs and, and faculty members that have that real world experience. So as you're going through curriculum um, and you're going through the textbooks, you're gonna be able to, to do it. Um, and, and the cool thing about it is the faculty members, since they have the experience, they can really break down, okay, the book says to do it like this. Um, you know, and from my experience, when I was out in the field, they can tell you really how it goes. Um, we really do keep all of our equipment updated too, as Katie mentioned a little bit through our industry partners and members of our advisory boards. Um, they will typically walk through the labs, check out the equipment and as needed, we'll make the adjustments and, and upgrades. We've seen our, our welding lab actually just had a, a huge renovation. Uh, it turned into, we added a bunch of equipment and we extended it. And it's now one of the largest welding facilities for education in, in the country. So it's just one of the, the many programs we see that the equipment is, is not matched. Thank you, Brad. And with that, so all of our majors, a hundred of, you know, a hundred diverse majors for you to choose from, how are they broken up? Well, here you can see our three different schools that we have here. So first is business arts and sciences. Um, and these are, of course, or this school is going to, of course, include our business programs, accounting, um, baking and culinary arts, as Rebecca would know. Um, and we'll talk more about that here shortly. Um, but yeah, so there's quite a range of different opportunities within business arts and sciences itself. Then moving on into engineering technologies, which is by far our largest school with about 53% of our students enrolled into one of these programs has a huge range within the school. Um, so you'll find programs from automotive to information technology and then to welding as Brad mentioned with many, many more in between. Um, and then finally, you'll see nursing and health sciences. So of course we have nursing programs, which are super popular. Um, dental hygiene is another popular one. And you were able to see a little snapshot of that clinic that was on the previous slide. Um, but we do have our own clinic here on campus and students are able to come and get their teeth cleaned for just $5. So always an exciting opportunity um, for our dental hygiene students to work with real clients too, of course. We also offer a physician assistant program that's a combined bachelor's master's degree that can be completed in five years. Um, and then speaking of degree programs, we do offer certificates, associate degrees, uh, bachelor's degrees, we have the combined bachelor's, master's, and we do have a master's degree program for nursing. Um, but all of our associate degree programs do have pathways into the bachelor's degree programs as well. So there's always that option to take your education one step further. How else can you take your education one step further? So many of our programs will include an internship, a clinical rotation, or a senior capstone. So this is a great way for students to get hands-on experience outside of the classroom. Um, these, of course, provide many benefits to our students. One being that you will be able to start networking and building your own industry relationships with employers. Two, you'll get more hands-on experience out in the real world and working actually in your industries. Um, the third, I think that these are a great way that you'd be able to try out different areas of your career path. So you can really hone in on what you love about your industry and then maybe you'll find something that you would like to stay away from a little bit once you're entering the workforce. Um, so with that, I'm going to ask Brad to expand upon an internship that he completed while he was a student here. Yeah, so I actually, um, for our business program, we require two internships. So I was able to, to do two, um, did those. One I did in our athletic program here in our athletics department. And another one I did for a summer baseball team. I was a, a sport and event management student. So. As you can see, those internships were, were pretty related to my major. Um, I, I really did enjoy, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the athletic department. Um, so when I was here, I was able to you know, build a relationship with the coaches that I already knew. Um, I was running social media content for different sports teams, helping out through the athletic office with you know, filing and, and writing any reports that they needed. Uh, this really just really prepared me to get into the real world, um, build those connections and, and get into the college level athletics. So 
um, looking from there, it was just a, a really good experience, both of them, so. Awesome, thank you, Brad. Okay, and then outside of your work-based learning opportunities, we also wanna talk about how else you're going to get experience outside of the classroom. So we are excited to offer global experience opportunities for our students. And these really have a huge range. So some of them will be eight days long. And then we also have full semester study abroad opportunities as well. Um, as the length of the opportunities vary, so do the location. So, uh, we have opportunities to go all across Europe and France and Italy, um, also down to the Dominican Republic for our dental hygiene students, as well as Guatemala for our nursing students. So some of our programs are major based or major specific, um, but we do have programs that are open to all students. So you will have the opportunity to not only travel, but you'll also be able to earn credits towards your degree and experience something new. So it's always very exciting. Um, and this is definitely something that I regret about my college experience is not taking the opportunity to study abroad. So I highly encourage you to do it if you're able to. Okay, so and of course, we know that academics are going to make up a huge part of your college search. Um, but that doesn't, you know, completely make up your college experience. So we do offer on campus housing for our students to fully immerse themselves into the college experience and Penn College life. Um, outside of that, if you know you choose to live off campus or commute, we do have other opportunities for you to get involved as well. Um, so we do offer Division Three athletics and we have 16 intercollegiate sports teams here at Penn College. And for a more casual setting, we do offer club and intramural sports. Our intramural sports teams are actually the largest student organization that we have as well. And we have about a third of our student population participating in them. Um, but we are lucky here because Brad actually was on our baseball team. So Brad, if you'd be able to tell us a little bit about what your experience was like as a student athlete at Penn College, please. Yeah, I had a, a, a lot of fun here when I was here. We, we competed pretty well. Um, we were in our conference championships, so it was really a lot of fun. But um, off the field, I, I think being a student athlete teaches you a, a lot of life lessons. Um, it also gives you a lot of skills that you can use when you get out into whatever industry you go into. Um, so being a student athlete obviously will require a lot of time and, and dedication. So time management is going to be crucial because the, the key word there is student first, athlete second, uh, especially at the division three level. You got to really push your academics first. Um, so you got to really be time, you know, take care of the time management, break down your day. When are you going to do what? When are you going to practice and when do you have games? Um, being organized is another big one. It, it really sort of relates to the time management, but you need to keep track of your work. Um, and really plan and, and keep everything organized. And finally, uh, the biggest one that I, I think being a student athlete taught me was being a team player. That's definitely something you can take into any industry. And I think every single employer out there is looking for somebody who can just be a team player. So I did have a lot of fun and it, it taught me a lot about life and, and what the real world will be like. Awesome, thank you, Brad. Um, and you did mention a lot about soft skills, not only what, you know, being a student athlete was like, but also what it taught you. Um, and I'd like to tie that into our student organizations as well, because these are another great way for our students to build those soft skills. Uh, so we do have over 65 different clubs and organizations that our students are able to get involved with. Um, and this is not only getting involved on campus and making those lifelong connections here, but it's also getting involved in the community as well. Um, so these will really have a large range from more of your hobby based organizations like ski and snowboard club. Um, but then we also have lots of different professional based organizations and many of them will line up nicely with your major. So you're able to develop those soft skills like teamwork and communication, but also leadership skills. And this is something nice to have on your resume in addition to your internships and your work experience and your academics, but it adds a little extra spice and a little flavor, I say to your resume, to help you stand out to employers um, once again. So always super important and keeps a competitive edge. And with that, I wanna talk about Williamsport. So for those of you that don't know, Williamsport is where Penn College is located and it's in North Central Pennsylvania. Um, so 
I am from here, Williamsburg is my hometown. So it was, um, it's also Brad's hometown. So we can definitely give you the insider scoop of what to look for. Um, but what I love about Williamsport is that there are so many different outdoor activities to do. So we do have the Susquehanna River that runs right through the city and that provides opportunities for kayaking and fishing, but we're also surrounded by state parks. So there's lots of opportunities for hiking and camping as well. Um, and with that, I want to turn it over to Rebecca because we haven't heard from you yet. What's your favorite part about Williamsport? Uh, yeah, I definitely love the connection to outdoors here in Williamsport. Um, hiking is one of my favorite activities to do outside of my coursework. Um, so I love going to either Jacoby Falls or Ricketts Glen. Um, just spending time with friends, hiking the trails is one of my favorite things to do. And even the river walk that's right here by school is a really nice a uh, way to just get off campus for a little, clear your mind and get a little exercise. Absolutely, thank you. How about you, Brad? Yeah, so growing up here my whole life, there's there's definitely, you, there, you can find something to do just about any time, but I like the, the number of restaurants that are around here. Every time I'm hungry, there's always somewhere to eat, whether it's sushi, Chinese, um, good burgers, wings, you name it. Um, there's just a lot of different restaurants in town here that, that you can go to eat. So I love food and that's what I like a lot about it. So. Absolutely. And not only are there a ton of places to eat downtown, but I'd also like to throw out that we do have 10 different dining facilities on campus as well. So you're never going to go hungry as a student here. <laughs> Okay, we covered that. So we talked a little bit about academics and then ways you can get involved on and off campus. So now I'd like to talk about the Penn College student, who they are, where they're coming from, and what are they studying? So here you can see a nice breakdown of our students um, as far as you know what they're studying and where they're from and then of course are they part-time and so on and so forth so at Penn College we do have about 5,000 enrolled um, and then to the left you'll see that we have about 80 percent of our students that are studying full-time in the middle you can see that we have about 60 percent that are seeking bachelor's degrees and then in the far right you will see that the majority of our students do come from Pennsylvania um, we are excited though to have students from our surrounding states like New Jersey and New York and Maryland Land, as well as all across the nation. We also have international students studying with us and we have students from six different international countries currently here with us um, at Penn College. So we're always excited for that as well. And then of course, down here at the bottom, you will see um, a breakdown of our programs by the largest program area. So information technology is in the front um, and then followed by nursing management and welding as well so just to give you a little bit of an idea of what our student interests are um, and then as well as the diversity of the programs that we offer this kind of puts it in a different perspective okay um, and now we're going to hear firsthand from one of our current students and her perspective and what she's been able to do here at Penn College the organizations that Rebecca is involved with and with that I will turn it over to you Rebecca take it away Alrighty. Um, so as I mentioned in the beginning I'm currently studying for my baking and pastry associates degree I'm in my third and final semester for that so I'll be moving um, full-time into my applied management degree in the spring semester Along with that, I'm also adding a small business and entrepreneurship minor here at the school. Um, so that's a very um, efficient minor for kids in my major to be able to pick up. Um, and it pairs very well with what I wanna do after college. Um, here on campus, I'm involved in several different um, club organizations. I'm involved with CREW, um, our United, United Christian Ministries, as well as our Hospitality Connections Club. Um, so with the Hospitality Connections, that's actually a newer club here on campus that my major was able to start um, and really revive from a previous club that had kind of died off. Um, and with that, that's one of the professional clubs we have here on campus that really helps us build um, connections with uh, other businesses in the area and helps us get more of a hands-on experience outside of the lab setting. Uh, so being a student here for me uh, is one of the best things I've been able to do with my life, honestly. Um, it's very much my second home here at Penn College um, in every way. I feel welcomed and um, I'm very much a part of the Penn College community, both as a student and as a student leader. Um, so 
what I love about the school here and one of the reasons I really chose to come to Penn College is the amount of opportunities outside of the classroom that I'm able to get. Um, through my program, I've been able to help at the Little League Challenger Series, serving food to the students that come through there, as well as I was able to apply and not quite go, but um, I was accepted to be able to attend the Kentucky Derby as a professional chef in the kitchens there, which is an incredible opportunity. I very much look forward to participating in in the future, as well as just being able to help out at the open houses and talk to potential students like you all. Um, it's just a great experience to be able to further develop my skills and really show what I love so much about the program, which is the hands-on and the faculty and staff I get to work with every day. And another one of the opportunities I was able to participate in last year was going to the Pennsylvania Farm Show for their Culinary Connections booth. And that allowed me to make more professional connections even to the chefs that we assisted through that program to do the demonstrations there. Um, so as I said, like those five opportunities I had during my freshman year here on campus. So I can't wait to see um, what other options I get to be involved in in the future years here on campus. Um, but the opportunities are really one of the major reasons I chose to come to Penn College. Not only that, um, the labs here for my major and all the majors really are just incredibly advanced. Um, we pride ourselves in having up-to-date equipment. Um, we just got a new oven in our baking lab two years ago, and that's one of the most incredible things I've ever used in my life, uh, which is something funny to get excited about, but I really love that oven. Um, and just the personality and the personability of the faculty and staff here on campus, um, all of my chefs and professors have felt made me feel um, just so welcomed into the community and are willing to help at any turn. Um, it, yeah, just the way they uh, relate and their knowledge and skill that they bring in from the industry uh, is just incredible to be able to experience and learn under them. Um, so for me, after college, uh, I want to work in the industry for a couple of years, and then I would love to open up my own cafe patisserie uh, shortly thereafter. So a lot of the uh, major core classes, as well as my electives, are really helping me prepare um, for that small business management and hopefully to become a successful pastry chef from there on out. That's so awesome, Rebecca. I love hearing about all of your experiences and how much you love working in your labs and what you do. I'm, I love cooking. I'm terrible at baking though. <laughs> so um, kudos to you. And I can't wait to try your food later on. Um, I think that's super exciting. We did have the opportunity as admissions counselors to actually go into one of your labs. So we saw the new fancy oven, but we were not able to use it. But we did work with Chef Charles to make some pizzas while we were in there. So um, always exciting to be in one of the culinary labs. So it's awesome. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Yeah. Okay, so Rebecca is clearly set up to be one of our successful alumni here. Brad is successful already as an alumni. Um, here are some other success stories though of our Penn College students that have gone on and graduated with their degrees and put them to work in their dream jobs actually. So on the far left here, you will see Christina and you may recognize her from the Food Network uh, series Chopped. Um, she was one of the top champions, so we're super excited for Christina. Um, but here you'll see some other stories as well, um, like Jessica Tobia, who was one of our graphic design majors, and she is now working for FC Dallas, which is a professional soccer, um, soccer team, and she is their creative manager. So just a couple stories that we're so excited for. It's always exciting to see where students go with their degrees after graduation and what they're able to do. So Let's talk a little bit about how you can get started with your success story. Um, so Brad, if you wouldn't mind explaining our three-step admissions process. Yeah, so at Penn College, we really believe that education is for everybody. Whether you're a new uh, student just graduating from high school, a transfer student, a veteran, an adult student, we believe that we have, we have something to offer you. So we really break it down into this three-step admissions process where we offer open enrolling admissions. What that means is that you can apply throughout the, um, we don't have a certain GPA, SAT score, anything like that. So we don't require that. Um, 
and we'll she'll pull that up there. Um, but what it also means is that you can apply and submit your materials and get hear back from us on a decision on your application. So here you see the three steps that we broke it down into. That first step is just to complete the application. Uh, it is free on our website. You can go to it, apply. It's pretty much plastered all over the website. If you have any trouble finding it, feel free to reach, reach out to Katie or myself. We'd be happy to get you there. Um, for new high school students, we do also offer the Common App, so you can apply through that as well. Once you get your application submitted, your second step is to submit your materials. Um, so this is going to be like your high school transcript, any other institution that you've attended. You'll want to get that in so we can review your application. And then the third step, like I said, we are test optional. We don't require the SAT or the ACT, but we do want to make sure students coming in are college ready. Uh, so we'll conduct a math and English placement test. Um, again, making sure students coming in are college ready. And two, we understand that students come in at different levels in math and English. So we're going to get you in the math and English class that fits you best. So that way, as you go throughout your academic career here, um, you're really set up for success. So that's the three steps. Thanks, Brad. Um, but yeah, I think especially now it's important to know, as Brad said, that we don't require SAT scores and we don't require minimum high school GPA. So really, you're just submitting your application, submitting your materials like your high school transcript or any transcripts from college courses if you've taken them. And within a few days, you're going to hear back from us with an admissions decision. So it is a pretty quick and easy process. We also don't require any essays or letters of recommendation. So um, our application, I would say, only takes about 10 or 15 minutes and it's free. Um, but of course, if you have any questions, we are here to help you all along the way. I'll also just throw out that we do have visit opportunities available as well. So I would love for all of you to be able to come to our campus and see our labs in person for yourself. You can come and see the new baking lab and check out our new fancy oven that we have, for example, um, but also the welding labs that Brad mentioned in our expansion that we just completed. Um, it really helps to put things into perspective and helps you that, to be able to you know, picture yourself here on campus and as a Penn College student. Um, of course, we are also on social media, so give us a follow if you aren't already. Uh, Instagram is especially a great way for you to see what our students are up to and what's happening here on campus and within our programs as well. And with that, I mentioned earlier that Brad and I are both admissions counselors here, but we're just two of 10. So there's a whole team of us that are here to help you through this admissions process from choosing a major, submitting your application, and then we're here to help you get up your tours set up as well as meeting the placement requirements. So we're absolutely your go-to people um, and you're gonna receive a lot of personalized attention here because once you're through the enrollment process, you're gonna be working with an academic advisor throughout your whole program program as well. So there's always going to be somebody here to help you if you have any questions. And with that, that pretty much wraps up our presentation. So at this point, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then we can go ahead and head into the Q&A. So if you do have any questions, I know we already have a couple and I'll go ahead and start reading those out loud, but please feel free to submit them into the chat box and we'll start working through those. Okay, awesome. So to answer Daniel's question, we do not have a football, um, we don't have a football team in our sports program, unfortunately. Um, our students though, um, though it wouldn't be playing football, I will throw out that since we are a special mission affiliate of Penn State, you would be able to participate in the annual football lottery and attend their football games on Saturdays. And their main campus is just about 45 minutes away from ours. So whatever events they have going on, you know, throughout the weekends, it's always easy to head on over and have something extra to do on your weekends. But unfortunately, no, no Division Three football team. We do have intramural sports, though, and we have a flag football team for intramural sports. But great question. Thank you. All right. And we'll just hang out here for a couple of minutes with any questions. Um, but at this point, I'll just ask Rebecca, we'll start with you first, if you wanted to share maybe what is one highlight that you've had so far? I know you just talked about a few, but maybe there's one that you didn't mention. So one highlight about your time here at Penn College that you'd like to share? 
Oh, there's so, there's so many good experiences I've had um, through my program, definitely. Um, I briefly mentioned about helping at open houses, and that's probably one of my favorite things that I've been able to do. Um, so for me, I was able to come into the lab and um, work with baguette dough. Um, so all day I was just shaping, cutting, baking baguettes, um, which bread is not my strong suit, but I definitely enjoyed it. And at the end of the day, um, my chef let me just kind of play around with the dough and I made a heart shaped baguette, uh, which is probably one of my favorite things I've been able to just play around and make. Um, but along with that, um, recently we did a trade show presentation through my coursework. Um, and that was really a compilation of everything we've learned throughout the semesters, um, as well as presenting it through a business plan. Uh, so I was really able to pull together everything I've been dreaming of for my future business um, and show that off to participants at the college, which was one of my favorite presentations we've done through my coursework. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. How about you, Brad? I'm going to pick on you too. What has been one of your highlights since you were a student here at Penn College? Yeah, you know, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, I really think my biggest takeaway from Penn College was the relationships I made, um, especially between me and, me and faculty. So I was able to use you know, to get into different positions. I was able to use faculty members and my previous teachers as references on my resume. Um, just because they were, they, they, we built that relationship. They knew me so well, I knew them. I trusted them to put them on my ref as a reference. Um, and they were able to talk enough about me too. So uh, just that relationship that you build, um, the knowledge and the, the relationships those faculty members have across the industry is, is really, one of a kind. That's awesome. Yeah. And I do believe that that's, you know, something that's kind of unique to Penn College because I did attend a larger university and I definitely missed out on that personalized attention and really getting to know your professors. So I would say that a lot of our students would agree that, you know, one reason that they chose to come to Penn College was, of course, for the hands on experience and being able to work in your labs every single week. Um, but another one would be those personalized attention and those small class sizes that you get to experience while you're here um, and really having your faculty get to know you and know you on a first name basis. Um, and really having to develop that relationship and getting that extra kind of support system while you're here too. So I definitely think that's awesome. So let me see here. Something else I'd like to talk about. I know I mentioned that uh, one of my regrets from college is that I wasn't able to get um, or I didn't have the opportunity to study abroad while I was in college and I really wish I would have been able to. Um, so I'm wondering, we'll start with you again, Rebecca, what's one piece of advice that you would have for anyone working through their college search right now? I definitely love the international aspect uh, as well. That's something I'm looking into um, as an opportunity on campus. Uh, but something I definitely recommend is um, when you're in the lab settings or in the classroom settings, really focusing on um, the relationship that you can build there with your professors, um, especially it being here a smaller institution. That's one of the things I appreciate. Um, but just how you can relate to the people that are running the departments. Because um, if you're easily able to connect with them on just a visit, um, the connection you'll be able to make working with them day in and day out will be astounding. That's great, thank you for sharing. How about you, Brad? What's one piece of advice that you would offer to anyone looking through colleges right now? Yeah, I, I think, you know, looking back at when I was going through the college search, uh, my biggest piece of advice would be to, to really just explore, um, explore different industries, explore different avenues that you can go to work, explore different colleges, um, because you're really going to start to figure out um, there's going to be a lot of opportunities out there that maybe you weren't aware of. So the, the sooner you can learn that, I, I really think um, it'll set you up a little bit better. Um, and as far as exploring colleges, the more you can see, the more you'll know which one you really like the, the best. Um, 
you'll know which one you fit into most and, and you'll pretty much know as soon as you step foot on the campus that yep this is this is home for the next whether it's two or four years so Absolutely. And I think Rebecca is great proof too that even if you're not ready to make that commitment for four years or you're not sure exactly where you can see yourself in that amount of time, that's okay um, because we do have those pathways in between our two and four year degrees. So um, Rebecca's on a great pathway and she's already completed her two or you're about to complete your two year degree moving into your four year degree for applied management. Um, but really being able to complete both an associate degree and a bachelor's degree in four years is really going to set you apart for those employers, but also give you that much more experience and a competitive edge. So I absolutely think that that's awesome, um, as well as, you know, adding all of your hands on experience and those amazing organizations that you're able to get involved with as well. Okay, so we'll just hang out for another minute and see if we have any questions. Um, popping up. But again, thank you all so much for joining us today. This has been really great. And I'm glad that you all wanted to learn more about Penn College. So I will just put out two. Um, and I'll share my screen again, actually, with our contact information and our visit opportunities. There we are. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to email the admissions office right here at admissions at pct.edu. Um, also head over to our website. It's just www.pct.edu. Um, we'll be here to help you work through the admissions process, searching for your major. We also have several different virtual events online too. Um, so these will kind of function as an open house, but all of our program information sessions are individualized. So if there's a program that you kind of want to learn a little bit more about, or you're not so sure about, or maybe you've never even heard of it, um, I highly encourage you to check out those virtual information sessions. Um, and those will give you the opportunity to to uh, ask our faculty some questions and kind of pick their brains a little bit about what their students are up to, what alumni are up to, and the different opportunities that are available for you here on our campus. Katie, we did just have a, a question pop up about uh, computer engineering. Um, so I don't know if you want to take that one or if you want me to talk a little bit about it. If you want to go ahead first and then I'll just add anything sure. on the tail end of that. Sure. Um, you know, I, I think computer engineering is something that, you know, I don't know if I'd say it's hard, but I don't know if I'd say it's easy. It, it's definitely a program that will challenge students. Um, I find that a lot of students as they get into programs that to some might be challenging when they feel it's the right fit for them. You know, you enjoy what you're doing and what you're learning. Um, you're able to get in there and be successful. And even if you are you know, struggling with some sort of curriculum, we have a number of resources for students to go out and, and get the help they need. So whether it's the faculty members, you know, you show up to their office hours and have them really break down what material you, you are struggling with. We also have the Academic Success Center um, which is going to offer your tutoring services and really anything you need. So um, as far as it being hard, I don't know if I would say it's hard. It might be challenging um, some of the classes, but I, I think that really gets into any program you have. I don't know if you guys have anything to add. I totally agree with what you said. So um, with computer engineering, you are going to be getting into more of your math and sciences. Um, so I wouldn't say hard is necessarily the, necessarily the word, but I would definitely say it could be challenging. Um, but it's absolutely doable um, as long as you're putting your mind to it and you're making that commitment as well as using the services that we have here on campus that really will set you up for success. Um, I wouldn't at all let you know, computer engineering or any STEM program at all deter you from enrolling into it. Um, I think it's all about, you know, putting your mind to it and just really 
following your dreams and trying to achieve, you know, what you're setting out to achieve and those goals that you have for yourself. So um, don't, don't let any, you know, STEM or science or math, don't let that deter you from doing something that you want to do. Absolutely go for it. Great question now. Okay. And I think, okay, that looks like it's it for all of our questions. Um, again, thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you, Brad and Rebecca, for joining me with our information session. You guys were awesome and provided a lot of great insight and perspective, I think, to our you know future students here. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you guys for your presentation, your great information. Uh, students and attendees, uh, once you end the webinar, you'll have a quick survey. And again, please feel free to check the website for any of the past recordings uh, or the last couple last couple days here coming up of um, sessions. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thanks everyone, bye-bye. Hello.